Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide. And this time we are grabbing it all in the very underrated Indycalypse. Now this was developed and published by Jandu Soft, was released on 29th of May 2020, and it's usually available for £10.74, but right now is on sale for £5.37. Plus look for future sales in the, uh, well, future. So... <laughs> So this is an epic adventure where we delve into and play a lot of mini-games based off of already incredible indie games such as Cuphead, The Binding of Isaac and Pissing Simulator. Uh, don't panic though, these games are not on the same difficulty uh, wavelength as the normal ones. It's basically a few short minutes of getting from one side to the other. You know, basically a why did the tr chicken cross the road joke. Now achievements and trophy wise, they, they are all story related apart from five, but they are super easy to find and do and of course I'll let you know when we get to them. As always, of course, timestamps for every act and achievement will be provided in the comment section below, so you'll be looking at around two to three hours to complete this, but that really does depend on how many times you need to restart a mini game. And again, we'll come back to that in just a little bit. So with that being said then, let us begin. So you can press play uh, just to begin and enjoy this little cutscene. And there are, as you would expect, a ton of Easter eggs already coming up in the form of Fideo Kojina. And also, my favourite part of the whole game, Dark Penetrator 69. What a name, what a legend. So here we go then, chapter one. We are the best looking nerd I've ever seen. Well, potentially. Now for any dialogue options, you can literally click anything you want. So you can just keep spamming the A button for here. Any dialogue options that we need to uh, pick specific ones, I will obviously let you know. But for now, we can just move out of here, head to the left, and we will be coming to our first mini game slash achievement now. So head into the programming class, even though you're a nerd, you are very forgetful. Um, just go ahead and hit your locker, grab your keyboard, and then we will be playing our first game, Code Hero. Now, if you're wondering what the hell this is, it, it does play exactly the same as <laughs> Guitar Hero. <laughs> and just a brief... Hello, Mr. Fuckeye. Oh, Fuckeye. Fantastic. Legendary name already. So, as you uh, would have expected then, so when we take the exam, there's going to be lines of code which will scroll up with one part of the code highlighted to match the button you need to press. On the right side is a meter that will actually fill up as you play the game and you need to get past the little arrow to pass. Now, for a little hint, what I do is put both of you... Uh, your first two fingers on the X and the Y and the A and the B button. For me, that was just a lot easier than trying to do it with just your thumb. So, little hint, potentially it'll help, potentially not. But, hey, you got this, girl. Boy. Everything.
So there we go then, that is the first mini game done, and as you can see at the very top with the green bar is the little red arrow, like I said, is what you needed to do to pass, so... Fluck yeah! Mr. <laughs> Mr. Fky. Thank you very much, and well, you can probably tell by his eye why he is called such <laughs> man. <laughs> Fair play, the writers had a cracking game with this one. So from here, drink the water fountain. This is the first missable achievement. Drink the water fountain, and now we're going to be playing the ever-fantastic pissing simulator. So drink the fountain, head into the toilet, uh, ignore um, Big Muffin Top here, and we're going to go straight into the toilet. And, well, welcome to everyone's favourite game, Splat Poo. Even though it's... Even though you're peeing, so technically it should be called Splat Pee, but... Now, if you are female, you don't have to win this game, by the way. But if you are female, you are genuinely missing out on games such as this. Little, little, little bits of poo on the side, and you get to uh, play Fireman and try and, uh, you know, disintegrate the poop with your pee. It's, it really is fantastic. There is not a game like it in the entire world, I promise. And this should be, generally, this should be in uh, a part of the Olympics. That, that's just my opinion, though. Gold medal in splat poo. <laughs> yes, please. Anyway, like I said, you can literally just pee on the floor. <laughs> just do what you want. And yes, this is genuinely how most boys are gross, if uh, any of you females are wondering. That is genuinely what a public toilet does look like. Um, so again, you can win, lose that one. Doesn't matter. As long as you drink and take a whiz, you will unlock the achievement straight away. Happy days. Now... From here, we're going to be going to the right, and we're going straight down the corridor. So head your nerdy ass down here. And we are going to be playing the next mini-game. As we head to the right, we're going to speak to Minecraft Head. And, uh, <laughs> you know, this just, it's just constant, by the way, this through the entire game. So, now we are playing Enter the Class Gun. So, instructions. Normally, they'll t uh, it'll give you instructions on what to do. They're not very fantastic, and I think I will give you better instructions. But this is basically based off Enter the Gungeon, your typical dungeon crawler. So, what you need to do then is press either A or right trigger to shoot. I apologize, I forget which one. And then you press the X button to reload. So, we're going to have these big Minecraft heads that appear. Um, we're also going to get these big bullies, so every time I shoot and kill an enemy, I would just press the X button or square button to reload. Now, every time that you kill a bunch of enemies, the uh, next door will open. So just follow the same path that I do. You can pick up health and um, weapon upgrades and stuff, but they're not particularly needed. So we're just going to head up through this door, kill old Minecraft head right there. A couple of big bullies now coming up. Again, just keep your eye, keep pressing the X button when you're not shooting, just to reload. Big. Well, I tell you what, you might have a big chest, but I guarantee that you've got a small wiener. That is just a guarantee. And that's why I'm perfectly proportioned all around. Uh, right, so heading up to the next room. Another couple of Minecraft heads to slice at dice and chick ice. And there's going to be a couple of big bullies. So obviously, if a door isn't open yet, that means there, there is one enemy still missing. And watch out for these guys. These guys have guns, which will actually spray three bullets at a time. So, you know, up to you whether you want to give a crap or not, but just in case. A uh, couple more Minecraft heads and these uh, big dog nerds with guns. Makes you feel like a big man, but you're actually a goddamn p -p pissy cat. Big bullies again. As you can see, this weapon upgrade really did... Uh, they, they do come in handy, but... Again, usually the enemies go down in three to five hits. Bully dog. Bomb, bada, bomb, bada, bomb. Now what you need to do is go down the left side door right here. There's going to be a couple more enemies, and then we are basically done with this mini game. It's very appealing to see uh, bullies sort of just melt to the floor. If only that was good in real life. Uh, there is one more gun guy enemy at the top here, so. Just a vegan cavern. There you go. You can suck him. You can suck him dry, buddy. Because we are done. Head to the exit. Job done. So, from here, then, we need to talk to Mr. Fuckeye again. So, obviously, we need to go back to programming class. Talk to uh, Bonkai Fuckeye. The Bonk. The. <laughs> 
the Bonkai of Programming School. It looks very nice, by the way. It would turn me on if I was a woman, honestly. Hmm. <laughs> so, from here then, just head past the toilet, past the locker, and through to this uh, next door right here. And watch as Jack gets out his inner steroid strength. Anger slash, you know, pure ripped as hell. Keep mashing the Y button and the B button when the prompts tell you. And you're going to beat the crap out of this guy. Isn't it good? So then, after technically murdering someone, a lot of blood on the floor, we're just going to head all the way to the left and begin the next game, which of course, this one is pretty obvious, is based off the Binding of Isaac. So, obviously if you haven't played it before, what it basically is, is an RNG uh, based dungeon crawler. In this version of the game, you will still have the perfect amount of poop <laughs> and everything to find, but you don't have to worry about picking up cards or pills. To shoot, you've just got to press the right stick, sort of up, down, left and around. Uh, now, these enemies, again, are pretty easy. You've got these guys, just make sure they don't uh, walk into you. The giant computers, or whatever the hell they were, they just shoot... Uh, they just shoot bullets in sort of four different ways. You've got to watch out for these flies as well, every time that you enter a dungeon. Uh, but of course, with this being a random generated one, you will not get the same rooms as I will. And that happens with quite a few of these mini games. Some are randomised and some are not. So, you'll always get the same uh, enemies and the same amount of poop and everything to shoot. Uh, but the doors may look a bit different, so um, yeah. It, it's literally it. All we're doing is just going through each room until we find that elusive wooden door to beat the last boss. But the boss, like I said, is um, absolutely simple. So these games like these are a lot easier, I promise, than, like I said earlier, the original counterparts. Also, if you do end up dying, you have to replay every mini game from the beginning, which sometimes won't be so bad. Other times, it may be a son of a bitch in the deck tits. So you know, just uh, just be good. You got this. I believe in you. Come in, come in. And this is the problem, well, like I said, with the uh, randomly generated dungeon crawlers. You end up losing your way, you haven't got a freaking clue where you're going. But, uh, you know, still all hardcore and... And it's just, it's incredible that hard poop is the, um, it's one of the uh, bits of armor for us if we need it from enemies there. Delicious. Not that delicious, I wouldn't bother. Ah, oh, hello, there we go. So we finally we finally reached somewhere. So we are we are actually coming up close to the elusive end. Now, like I said, you might find the elusive wooden door a bit quicker than I do. Um, or you might find it a little bit longer. Which is, obviously, like I said, this is just what happens with randomly generated games. But we are coming up to the end, so just keep shooting your way through.
Aha, the elusive wooden door. So, this is basically based on the Gemini boss fight in the original Binding of Isaac. So, what you need to do is obviously just keep running. Don't go into the heads and try to avoid the uh, head, obviously, as much as you can. And just keep on shooting. As soon as the head, uh, as soon as 50% of the health goes down, the head will detach. The body will start running, but you can just keep shooting at the body until a uh, big cream pie Pudding and Puff there decides to die. And then we just run into the principal's office. Principal, uh, well, we'll call him Principal Midget. They didn't make a funny name for the principal, which is a shame. Again, choose any dialogue option you want here. Uh, the one that we will come up to will be a little bit later on. And, of course, I'll let you know. So then that is Act 1 done with, and we're going to go straight into a mini game with Jack Trip, which is uh, basically the classic game, the Bit Trip. So you've got a progress bar at the top, which will show you how far you've gone and how far you have left to run. Um, the obstacles themselves are very straightforward. You press A to jump, uh, which is over gates, cones, cracks, buckets, and poop, and you'll need to duck under traffic lights using the left stick, pressing down on the left stick. So, as soon as you uh, see any obstacles, you should be absolutely fine. Just make sure to jump a little bit earlier for the poop. Um, but everything else you can jump and slide under with no problems. As you can see, the poop for me... Yeah. I accidentally stick my head straight into it. You'll, so, with the poop, you'll need to jump a little bit earlier. Otherwise, it's fairly short. Uh, so, hopefully, that shouldn't give you too many problems. But when we get home, we've got... <laughs> We've got old Captain America dad here. Uh, again, pick any dialogue option, but we are going to be going straight into another mini game called Model Daddy. Now, what you need to do, all you've got to do is basically, uh, he's going to attack us with a high or low kick. So every time you see the exclamation point um, up high, you press down on the deep, uh, down on the left stick again, and then when you see it down at Jack's feet there, you press the A button to dodge. As soon as you see it up top, press down on the left stick, like now. And then one at the bottom, press the A button. Beep! Wha bam And it'll take three attempts, and then Angry Papito. <laughs> it's just brilliant names. Uh, imagine trying to beat our ass and you couldn't. Ah, you're a dickhole. Unlucky, bro. So, we need to basically go upstairs now and give our Angry Papito... And we're trying to better ourselves, man. We're trying to be rich here, bro. You give me a hard time for trying to be rich. Or maybe it's because I'm still a virgin. I, I don't, don't know yet. Anyway, the first door was Jack's room. And what we need is the Roca Cola. Which I wonder what that's based off. Probably 7-Up or Fanta or something. And you can check your PC as well. Because we need to find a wire for that as well. But, uh, yeah. So, check the, check the PC. And then go into the next room. And we are going to find our brother... What people like to call him Skinny Pat for ironic reasons. Extremely ironic reasons. Uh, but we'll speak to Pat. He's got the wire that we need. Shoved God only knows where. We'll uh, have to come back to that. But we need to actually find him something to eat. But first of all, we're going to speak to Papito. We'll give him the old disgusting Roca-Cola Fanta 7-Up. And that's basically going to give him the squits. So happily for us, he is going to uh, go and crap his pants. We go into the kitchen, speak to our little mamgi right there. Hello, mama. Where's your legs, girl? Uh, basically, we now have to play, <laughs> because we fall flat on our face again, we need to play another game, uh, Cooking Roach, which is obviously f uh, inspired by Cooking Mama. So it's fallen onto the dirty floor, which is fine, but what we need to do is pick up a piece of bread or food or whatever, and then what we need to do is keep spinning the left or right stick, or the left stick, either left or right, until it clicks into place. And you'll hear it actually click into place. What you'll see then is obviously cockroaches uh, go ahead and take the food. Um, obviously, you need to get that food before the cockroaches go off screen with it. So what I would do is just wait for the cockroaches to take a piece of food, and then just keep uh, going back, but remember you've got to keep spinning the food until it clicks into place and it will give you a little note when it is uh, When it is actually done 
So just keep your eye on the cockroaches, even if you've got to leave the food that you're doing and go and grab it, just go ahead and do that. So, we've made the sandwich, to be fair mind, I've shat out prettier things than that sandwich, but skinny, ironic skinny Pete will still eat it anyway, because he's, uh, well, he was skinny once, and he'll eat anything for money. He is a dirty whore like that. Uh, <laughs> technically, that's prostitution, eating stuff for money. Anyway, go ahead, give him the sandwich, and then what he'll do is spew that up obviously, because there's all cockroach crap and stuff on it, but we can now get the wire, and now we can head back into our bedroom, on the left hand side, watch out for the pornography posters everywhere, dirty boy De oh wait, no, that was just skinny Pete's, anyway, go into your PC little cutscene's gonna happen, we can go to bed, and then we're gonna be playing the next mini game, Geometry Jack which is a play on the old game Geometry Dash now this one, I did have a couple of problems with, to be fair I don't know why, it just pissed me off. So you can have three sections to this game. So the first part is the basic jump over the obstacles part, so you need to dodge spikes, buzz saws, and make your way up and down blocks. Uh, as you can see there, you've got the progress bar at the bottom as well. So you do get a little bit of play off the uh, spikes, but obviously try not to go straight into them. Head up the ramp, and just keep dodging for a uh, little bit. So next we're going to turn into a hot dog, so what you need to do is press up on the left stick, but it just sort of floats, so you just keep hovering over it, as it were. Uh, so obviously if you go up, you don't go up and down, you just sort of hover over it and you sort of go up, you've got this little angry birds part as well, which again isn't too bad. Jump down Im immediately there, that part did give me a bit of trouble, but as soon as you get past that we have now got the final bit, which is again the basic bit, but it does get a little bit faster. So, make sure not to jump too late, otherwise you will not make it to the end. So yeah, like I said, I did have a couple of problems with that. It was only the one main part, about 67% through when we were in the flying hot dog. Uh, that, that bit just done my tits in for a bit. Because obviously you die, you go back to the beginning. Annoying. So, angry Papito then, is he feeling a bit better there? He, his legs don't look good. They look uncomfortable carrying about 15 stone on top there. Uh, but he tells us to go check on our brother, and we're obviously pretty pissed off. So, well, you need to do a little bit of button mashing again, but uh, yeah, Jack gets a bit sadistic once more. Interesting. <laughs> Well, goddamn, skinny, skinny patch no more. We went and just porked our brother. Oh, uh, no, wait, ignore that bit. We just stuck our pork straight in the pat. Ah, hmm. We, you get what I mean. We killed him. Sadistic Jack come out and we uh, put our pork inside our brother, and that's it. That's all we need to know in the situation, okay? <laughs> anyway, we are now on to Act 3. And honestly, these next two mini games are genuinely my most favorite of the, of the game, purely because of the hilarity. But when we get the dialogue option, we now have to choose a particular one. We need to accept. We need to press B, and we need to accept it. And that is to get this mini game up. If you refuse, you won't get the mini game up. And there is no chapter select, so you'll have to replay the whole game until you get to this point again. So for the love of God, <laughs> make sure to press accept. Head over to the oven and press that one up. 
And now we need to do everyone's favourite thing, and that is showering with their grandpa. Don't tell me that's not your favourite thing either. I've seen of the videos. <laughs> right, so, um, this is actually based off a, a, a very controversial and not that much better named game, Shower With Your Dad. Uh, so what we need to do, there's three grandpas and basically we need to get to the one, uh, our grandpa, the one with just the eyes. So the, uh, the black guy there, obviously we don't need to get him, and the white guy with the glasses, we don't need to touch him. It's only the white grandpa without the glasses. But you've got to avoid slipping in water and slipping on soap as well. But you can actually pick up the bars of soap for double points as well. So you've got to keep going. Obviously there is a timer in the top right hand corner. So just keep on slamming. Try to avoid uh, getting inside any of these grandpas. If you slip you end up square in grandpa's butt crack. And well that will take a goddamn while to wipe off as well. And you don't want any grandpa genitalia floating about either. That just... Trust me, nobody wants that. Actually, I, I say trust me, don't trust me. I've never had grandpa genitalia floating around me before. Still, pick up the soak, soap, grab the grandpas, <laughs> and thank God we're done. Sorry, Grandpa, but that's what happens when you look at little boys like that. You get soap in the head and you get dead. Brown bread, dead. Don't look at me like that again. Anyway, now we've got to play this next minigame. Now, you can actually fail this minigame. You've got to put the correct things on uh, dead Grandpa here. Apparently dead, uh, dead Grandpa who liked little boys. That's not good. So you need to put on the uh, ball and chain, which is obviously very kinky. Now, what you actually need to put on, I didn't realize that you could fail. I thought you could just put whatever you wanted on. But there are actually uh, another two things that you need to do. So, the ball and chain is correct in Grandpa's mouth. The next one you need to do is like the golden eyelashes. And the last one is like the Naruto kind of ninja thing on the top of your head. Sorry. I've just said that and somebody's going to be pissed off at me for saying it like that. But that's the order you need to do it in. Slam any dialogue options you want. And then that is... Well, dead, disgusting grandpa gone. So we are coming up to the next missable achievement now. So before we go into the burger place, speak to the hobo. And there's going to be a cup next to him. Um, hopefully it's not full of urine. But we need to actually play the game. So interact with the cup. It's called Dollar Toss. And basically, you can completely just uh, lose this. You don't need to beat this game in order to progress. So you can literally just press the A button. Press the A button again to miss. I did try. I didn't like the game. So I just thought, you know what? Up your nan. I'm out of here. I We are, get <laughs> we are getting out of here. Job done. So happy days. So we're actually trying to get a job in Burger Donald's. Now, I wonder what the hell that could be as well. Probably play on, like, uh, KFC or something again. Yeah, I tell you what. Don't make it too obvious, please. So, we need to ask for a job by pressing the X button there. And then what we need to do is go into the next mini game, which is called Super Duck Punch, which is a play on everybody, literally everyone's favourite game back in the day, Super Punch Out. So... Talk to the duck right here. Now there's only a couple of buttons once again that you need to worry about and that is the uh, that is down on the left stick and the A button. So just keep spamming the A button as many times as you can to see how many punches you can get in. And then you will know when the duck is about to attack because he'll do a small animation and then you can press down on the left stick and uh, to get out of his way. So you will just see there. We punch in, we're punching, we're punching. 
We're punching. We're punching. And then as soon as he brings his fist together, that is when he is going to try and strike. So as soon as they come a little bit closer together, you'll you'll you will be able to just see it. There he goes. So as soon as he does that, but stay down until he's finished his move. If you get up too early, you will get punched in the dick and snack, like I just did there. So we'll need to beat him three times, but it shouldn't be too bad. Just keep spamming the A button and dodging the attacks. Easy, right? <laughs> So once we are done with that, we he's uh, buggered off, now we can go in and get the job, and now we are coming up to, personally, the worst game, or it was for me, the worst minigame in the entire game. And just because there was a couple of things, you can just fail super, super easy. So what you need to do then, a customer's going to come up with an order, either an order or, she'll, or they'll say something like, uh, you've overcharged me, please check, so we've got to check the price. Um, from their receipt to the book that we've got there. So as you can see there, we've got the regulations menu book down below. So this guy, for instance. So he wants some mustard. So what we need to do now is check the receipt. There we go. So we need to check the receipt. You need to grab up the book. Remember that he wants mustard as well. That is important. Otherwise, you will end up uh, getting basically a ticket off. And you can only fail this three times before we've got to go again. Uh, so you need to check each price. So the marinated chicken burger, $9.99, $1.90 for all the drinks. The, um, yeah, marinated chicken burger, all that. As long as the prices from the receipt match up to the menu and they've only asked for something like mustard or anything, what you can do then is press the thing and uh, press the thing on the right hand side and then you've got the okay. So you can give them mustard, give them the receipt back and that counts as uh, basically a win. So we go on to the next customer. But there are a lot of people then that will say, um, you've overcharged me. So for this one, she wants some ketchup. So once again, we're going to do the same thing. Check the receipt and make sure that everything, because she hasn't asked to be um, overcharged. But as you can see, the alleged meat burger there is only 29 cents. So what we've done is undercharge her. So even though she hasn't asked for uh, to be overcharged, we still undercharged her, so now you need to tell her to f, f off. Literally tell her to f off. Don't worry about the ketchup. We need to tell her to f off because we undercharged her. So the uh, prices on the receipt need to match the exact same as the menu right there. And so this is an example of an okay. So he's asked for ketchup, so keep that in your mind, ketchup. And then obviously what you need to do is just again get out your menu and just make sure the prices match. So he hasn't asked... He hasn't said to be an overcharged or anything, he's just asked for ketchup, but we need to check that the prices match the exact same on the receipt. So now we can press the OK stamp, give him that, give him the ketchup, and that is job up, yeah, mum, done. So, they're going to keep adding new regulations as well, which is on the left-hand side of the book. Uh, but what you also need to be very, very mindful of is the date. Now, some customers will come out with receipts that have the wrong date on them at the bottom. So always make sure the first thing you do is check the date. And obviously, as we'll be able to see once again, the alleged meat burger, 26 pence when it's 99 pence on the menu. So again, we are going to tell him to go and suck his mum off. We are telling him to F off. So he doesn't like it, but don't try and trick me, bruh. So once again, we are just carrying on. Now, this is a random event as well. Uh, unfortunately, you'll probably guess that by now, but this is a random event. So I'm just sort of trying to give you tips and hints um, as to what actually goes on. So again, with the kebab burger, 
it, we've obviously overcharged him. So obviously what you need to do now is press the OK uh, button. He's been overcharged we have overcharged him so that means you can press ok on the receipt so it's only when we undercharge them and they're trying to get money back that we tell them to go and f off so again it's the same sort of thing then so we want some ketchup but we need to check the uh, receipt to make sure it's all good so if the and there are the regulations so always check the new regulations as well because some people are going to come in with different parts um, of food called like rich mouse and doggy burgers and stuff like that so you've just got to be very very mindful do not rush for the love of christ do not rush <laughs> uh, so we're obviously telling him to f off as well uh, because if you rush if you if you don't check the date don't check anything um it, your mind can go and you end up having to replay all this bit again and it's a pain in the dick and snatch So here is an example of one of the wrong foods. She's uh, put on the receipt a stinking rich mouse burger. So it doesn't matter the date, it doesn't matter anything. We need to tell her to F off. So again, always check the date first, then everything on the receipt, and then the prices. I got quite lucky there with three wrong orders in a row. Or don't tell me it's a rich and stick, rich and stinking, rich mouse burger or whatever it is. So here we go. For some reason, this bit confused the crap out of me. Now with discounts, you've got to be very, very careful. So minus ten percent, even though it says burger Donalds, that is actually correct. So. As long as they've got that, that is fine. Just make sure then that everything is um, correct on the receipt as it is with the menu. As long as the uh, everything is correct, then you will be able to okay the receipt. This bit can be quite confusing when it comes to discounts. Um, so if that's the case, obviously what we can do, we can just go ahead and tell her that is okay. Now be aware that some customers might ask for a discount voucher without actually having a voucher so if they say can i have a voucher or can i have discount but they don't have a voucher make sure to tell them to go and suck off and f off again that one did catch me out as well lots of little things that can catch you out for this one so with this one again i think we are pretty much this is a bread burger yeah, again, obviously, just always double check. Double check the date, double check the receipts and everything. But we are telling him to go and suck his mum off. Um, again. <laughs> And this is another one that can completely catch you out. Have a look at the membership card. Have a look at the valid until date. Obviously, we're in 2019. That is valid until 2004. So again, it, that is another one that can catch you out. So we need to tell him to go and flub a duck. Tell him to get some new glasses and shave his teeth off a bit. Because, honey, you ain't eating here, bruh. And then finally, after all of that, when this guy appears, he will appear at the end every time. And this bit is completely automatic, so you can just chill out now for five. But that, for me, took half an hour just because it was the vouchers that were confusing me. 
it pissed me the hell off, and that is the worst mini game I've ever played. Sorry, Jan, too soft, but I hated that. So this bit's automatic, as I said. So just enjoy it, or you know, get some relief because it's over. So, uh, for this bit, you can, again, slam through all the dialogue as normal, but I'm just wondering, uh, to any game developers that, that could potentially be watching, is that what happens? Do you go from skinny nerd to complete fat, gorgeous, sex godlike beard man? Is that, is, is, is that what happens? I don't know. I tell you what, all I'm doing is creating guides, and, uh, well, it seems to be happening so far without the beard and the hair. I'm a bald man! So we are on to chapter 4 out of 7, we are now playing as Ethan, and we're basically just going to be following his story. So, here is Dave Mustaine, this is, was obviously before he got incredibly famous, or maybe it was after he got incredibly famous. Or in this game he's called Dave Mustagen, which is hilarious, which I love. So, we now need to be doing, as usual, another mini game. So, slam this student's locker open and go and pick up his tooth. It's, uh, man, what a skew. What an absolutely cool skew. Um, so, interact with the classroom. Uh, it's basically going to tell him that we need to find what we need, our little keytar. So, uh, head to the right. We can open up this and we will be grabbing that bottle of Power Zade a little later on. Later on, Power Aid even, not. Open the locker on the left, and there's a Kita, and then here we go. So, for this one, this is basically more or less like a Simon Says type thing. So, seven kids, they're all going to burp in a particular order. You just have to follow that order, but what I've done, because I love you guys, and I don't want to see you struggling or having to actually think about doing achievements. Uh, what I've done there is I've labelled them from left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there are in the little bit of blue is the order in which you've actually got to do it. So it is as simple as that. And you need to do four different chimes. I think some are in like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, a bit of Mary Had a Little Lamb, a bit of Mary Had Your Little Nan. And then that's about it. So just follow the blue keys or the blue code, blue notes, whatever. And life is good. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh,
Dirty, dirty, dirty kids. Burp like that without spewing. That is actually very impressive. I'll give them that. So we need to head back to Mustagan's office now, which is obviously on the very right hand side. So I have a little chat with Big Dave the Rave. <laughs> then we are going to be heading out and heading all the way to the left. We're going to be playing another mini game um as you can tell there are, are a lot of mini games in this one uh, but there is also a specific dialogue option that we need to choose so slam through the dialogue for now with uh well captain weirdo right here and then press no so press b no and then we'll smash through the dialogue once again and then uh, we will get to play a game called super 3d osborne's arc which is basically wolfenstein 3d which is just awesome anyway. So uh, there's a couple of enemies. There's only a couple of en enemies in this game. So uh, all we need to do is spray basically holy water on the sinful children of the school. Um, now how many you need to shoot is kind of random for everyone. Uh, we've got a water meter there on the right hand side. And it can be refilled by picking up water bottles uh, throughout the map. So if you get hit too many times as well, you'll obviously need to uh, play the game again. Press the right trigger to spray the water, the A button when you're next to a door, and that one is that. So I do end up picking up some water, but I don't think you particularly need it. So we can just go through the first sort of main door, and there is going to be after this one with all the records on the wall. So try and use the environment of uh, where we are going. So there's going to be a, a kid right there. Right trigger that, and then go straight ahead. Press A to obviously open the door. There is a kid in one of these alcoves, so be careful. He's right behind me this time. So he's on the left as you enter. Spray with the holy water, go through, spray this kid with water, and there will be, I believe, one more as we head through the right-hand side. Is there... No, no. So there's only three, so if you take that... I think the path will always be the same. The amount of kids that you've got to spray will be different. So we've got the meds, and now we can take them straight back to Big Dave. So we now need to go into the kitchen and take the meds to Lemmings. Now, if you're wondering who Lemmings is, um, if you, the kitchen is right by the side of it. And for any rock fans, any Motorhead fans, well, you'll know him as Ian Lemmy Killmister. There we go. So, <laughs> you know, I find it absolutely hilarious. But again, we're just slamming through the dialogue for the time being. Ah, oh, Lemmy, you rest in peace, bruh. Dude. I love that they've uh, put him here as a chef. An angry chef. <laughs> it's brilliant. The humour in this game is phenomenal. So we need to find that missing ingredient. We already know where it is, so head out of the kitchen and it is in the locker right next to you. On the left, we already opened it up. There it is, so that is the Power Aid. Yeah. Or Power Ape, sorry, it's not called Power Aid, Power Ape, obviously. Lawsuit and stuff, you don't need it. So, uh, what you need to do then, for this particular one, <laughs> I wonder what this is off. Not definitely not Breaking Bad. But this is the same for everyone, so do not worry about that. Uh, but, uh, excuse me, bloody Jesus, mate. What I'm going to show you is how not to do it first. So, you need to press the right trigger to basically pour the power ape in. What I done was put way too much in. Um, and, yeah, it's going to basically explode. So, we fail, we need to start again. So, what I would advise is just to very slowly and gently press the right trigger until it just little bits start pouring in. And what we need to do then is, 
<laughs> um, I end up just restarting it here anyway. So that is not how not to do it. But what you need to do, you need to get the power ape. Um, you see where the sort of cracks are in the pots on each side. We'll just cut, we'll, you know, call them, you know, the lines we need to go into. So the power ape it needs to go in between the first and the second line. So again, pour it very carefully. No need to rush. Just a little bit more. About halfway in between this first and second line. There we go. The uh, chimichanga needs to go just above. A little bit just above the second line. Uh, not too much though. About halfway is fine as you can see. And then the tomato ketchup you can just fill up. Till the, uh, you get to the top of the line. And then it should automatically say delicious. So what we need to do now. Change the dial and put it to around 20 to 21. But you've got to be careful. As it starts getting redder and hotter. Turn it all the way down back to zero. Until it cools off again, because you see the black smoke, basically, if it's too much black smoke, gets too hot, it's going to explode, we have to start the minigame again. So, around 21, and then as soon as it gets too hot, chuck it down to zero. Now, you're thinking if you put it up hotter, then it'll go faster. That is actually not the case, it'll actually make it go slower. So, that's why 21, and you can get it done in around three turns. And that, my friends, is Delicious Mundo, stick it in Dave. And then get your big dick nose out of there. So, unfortunately then, as you could just see, we had to explode a bunch of kids um, to get out of there. So, Ethan... There's a lot of murder going on in this game. I didn't expect it to be so murdery. Uh, but we are going to come up to a miserable achievement. Now, you don't need to talk to the bouncer here. I actually meant to go through the door. Again, game developers, is this is this what you all look like? I've seen some way better looking game developers than this. Including Sack of Potato there. <laughs> so, the Rats of Us, that's a classic. Uh, so, talk to Jack, uh, talk to Ethan, sorry, first. Um, with our stall, again, you can choose whatever the hell you want. And then the missable achievement, if you go all the way to the right-hand side, you can speak to Violet if you want for the time being. Uh, again, pick any option. I just choose uh, I chose X button there. Are you all right? Uh, Violet does seem to be a bit um, taking the old... Wacky tobacky half a pilly McWilly Willy. Uh, so yeah, head all the way to the right, right next to the Elmorin Song game. Speak, <laughs> speak to the legendary Jandu Soft, the developer who, uh, if you can see there, if you could probably just see on his laptop, you get the achievement for talking to him. But that is um, Jandu Soft's very first game, Caveman Warrior, which is bloody hard to complete. <laughs> But they released that one in 2017, so it's a nice little throwback, nice little Easter egg and a throwback there. Uh, so we need now need to talk to Twitchy McTwitchface right here. Uh, again, choose any option. We should be good for this bit. But what we are playing now is a game called Dino Jump. And this, once again, was a bit of a pain in the old nutter butter ball sack for me. Uh, so you don't have to press any buttons. The only one you press in, the Dino jumps on his own. All you need to press is the left and right um, left direction, left directional stick, left or right. 
Um, and we basically need to beat the high score of 499 to continue. So if you jump up too high, you cannot jump um, back down because you will die. And what you need to do is jump on. There will be springs such as this, which will obviously jump you higher, get you um, higher again. But you need to look out for flying bits of uh, poop, as you can see there. So any flying bits of poop will make you die. You can jump on those eggs. I did just miss one. But basically what those eggs will do will fly you up even higher. But you need to be careful of where the flying poops are. If there is a flying poop as you just hit one, you will actually go straight through it. But if you hit one just at the end of your egg run, you will die. So that just be very careful. Be careful of the rocks as well. They crumble straight away. And you will obviously die. So this one again did take me a couple of tries. So hopefully with uh, you guys and gals you can just do this a little bit quicker. Uh, but as you're going up just, just try and be careful. When you hit one of these eggs always, always keep aiming up to see where you can land next rather than down below. So just keep aiming up and there we go. So we get to 499. I'm just jumping straight down. We are done. Again that one took me about 10 minutes to do. You, my friend, can go and shove a Tweedledee and Tweedledum straight up your bum. Because that was a hella annoying. So now we can go to the left. Now we're going to be playing the next game at the E4 conference. Which is a hell of a lot better than E3. Obviously, can you not tell? And it's called Call of Rats <laughs> Modern Warfare. So we're basically in a big soft play centre. All you need to do is press the right trigger to hit... Um, these balls at the little gingerinos right here. You know, he's a ginger kid that have no souls. So just keep... Uh, it's probably better not to spam the right trigger button because the kids can be a little uh, annoying in terms of the way they walk. They will hit you back as well, so just be careful. Uh, but all you got to do, just try and aim at them, and then when you need some ammo, press the X button in the ball pit three times and that'll fill you right up. Fill you right up with balls, it will. So, <laughs> you can just follow him um, up here, up these little steps. And there's going to be three, ki three kids up here. There should only be five kids in total. Two downstairs and then three upstairs. Um, so, again, just obviously, you know, be careful. But this one is definitely one of the easiest, thankfully, of the game. So, blah, 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 blah. Um, now, every time they ask you a question, if you say things like it's got huge potential or it's good, um, he's just going to carry on. So what we actually need to say is basically all of the worst answers in terms of it's shit, it's not going to do well, the worst piece of crap I've ever seen. So that is how you get past the conversation. So we are talking <laughs> now. Uh, we're going to be playing a game called Tiny Chicks. Um, this one belongs to Cliff Blozinski, hilariously. Um, and it is based off the original game, Tiny Wings. So, we need what we need to do then is, as we're going over hills, if you press the down, down on the uh, left directional stick as you're going down, uh, down, uh, obviously, slope, obviously, you'll pick up speed, and then that'll shoot you up um, when you're going uphill. So, obviously, it, it's, it, it is easy enough to get used to, but you need to collect coins to keep the time at above 30. So, this one's relatively easy as well, as soon as you get used to it. So, every time you're going downhill, just press down, you'll pick up speed, and then hopefully fly off, fly up some ramps. But make sure to collect the coins to keep the timer up.
So that is all the fantastic games at uh, E4 done. Now you just know if this was a legit long title, all of those would have been 1,000 gamer score points each, literally for pressing the down button once and the A button twice. Sorry, it's, it's, it's another shit long bash. Sorry, sorry. Anyway, what we're doing then, this one is very easy, uh, the pitch battle. All we need to do is pick the specific answers in a Who Wants to Be a Millionaire style question. So, um, Violet here is going to give us this, bruh, and we're going to give us this back. But of course, you need to cor uh, pick the correct answer. If you pick the wrong answer, you'll fail and just have to start again. So, Music de Merde is a shitty game. Uh, number two, use Cliff blow Blows in Skis. <laughs> Trash talk. Ah, so funny. Ah, this sh Jandu should definitely do more games like this. So that is the correct answer there. Number two. What she's going to say next is your game is a monument to boredom. Now you need to choose number four. Be a douche just like El Morena. El Morenas. Oh my god. El Morenas. El Morenas. Yeah, hilarious. So that is the second one. And then we've got one more to go. Violet is going to say, which you can say, you'll always be a nobody in the video game industry. We need to choose number one, Chenova Gen Zen's reply. And that is how you win pitch battle. Sadly, we're not a millionaire at the end of it, which, well, that just sucks donkey nuts. But we do flip Violet off, which is always hilarious as well. <laughs> So we begin as Violet, or we are on to Violet's story. Now the first missable, this next missable achievement, as it were, is directly in this room. Just to the left of you, when we can move, is the trash bags. So interact with the trash bags, when we get the dialogue option, we need to say kill some flies. Or kill a few flies there, the X button. Now what uh, this basically does is... Um, uh, God damn it, what's the game called with the dog and the ducks and uh, the... The dogs shoot bees at you. Uh, you. You know how it works. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So flies are going to start appearing one at a time, and we just need to press the A button to kill the fly. Um, after every kill of the fly, the bullets automatically reload. So don't worry about that. So you just need to follow the fly, hit the A button, and that is job done. Now there is no uh, quicker way of doing this you can actually just stay you don't actually need to complete this you can just stand still if you want to uh, exhaust all your lives until the end of the game and then go back into the main uh, game to continue with the story but i um, actually just go through it anyway so there's basically five rounds um killing what's that 10 flies each, so you need to kill 50 flies, but it doesn't matter if you end up missing one. But like I said, if you want to, you can just stand still until all the flies bugger off, but that'll actually be a little bit longer doing it that way. So you might as well just have some fun killing somehow 50 flies, and that is disgusting. 50 have you got somebody's old diarrhea poop in those bags? Who has 50 flies hanging around? <laughs>
So finally, with that one done, that was a bit of a pain in the nut sack once again, wasn't it? But we're going into <laughs> Miss Saggy Tits Dog Groomers. Now that is unfortunate, but that is also true. In fact, it's true for me as well. They call me Mr. Saggy Tits for a reason, you know. So anyway, we need to play the next game, um, which is basically, it, it's, it's a dog groomer simulator. So what we need to do then, there are uh, four big things at the back there with bones. We need to go into each one as the dogs come down the conveyor belt and press the A button to uh, throw them the bones. What you also need to be careful of though is the poop. As soon as you see a poop on the conveyor belt, you need to go and grab that. If the dog, one of the dogs, uh, falls off the conveyor belt or hits one of the poop, uh, you basically lose a heart and uh, three hits, that means you've got to start over. So as soon as you see a poop, just go and grab them. You just have to, in you don't have to interact with it, just jump over it um, just to grab that. So it's just very important that you get the poop and then you can run back quick as you can and then throw a couple of bones. Obviously the further down the conveyor belt they are, the more bones that you'll need to throw up as well. So they go straight back up said conveyor belt. So it can be slightly, a little bit confusing and a little bit annoying to be fair, but it's uh, it's not too bad when you get used to it. This one I did manage to do the first time. So again, as soon as you see any dogs, just uh, slam the bone in them. <laughs> oh no, that's uh, animal cruelty. Well, depends which bone you're talking about here. I'm talking about dog bones. And that's basically it <laughs> for this one. Thanks, Miss Saggy Tits B. So now we can go home, but we are going to be playing one more mini game again immediately. Um, let's just say our flow has decided to visit early. Uh, Tom equals time of the month. Tom's decided to visit early. So this is an obvious, obvious uh, interpretation of Cuphead. So you uh, press and hold the A button there to uh, keep shooting. What we're going to be shooting then is uh, blood clots, tampons and even baby fetuses as well. So what you'll see, you'll obviously uh, just dodge the flying tampons there and the baby fetuses. So you'll have, once again, you'll have, if you get hit more than three times, you'll have to start all over again. But as you see these diamond cards, we'll call them, diamond cards coming up. As soon as you get one, you can press the X button and that shoots out uh, one of your own special, special tampons. Um, obviously, the more you get, so if you get to four and then you press the X button, it, the, the damage is a little bit more, as you can see there. Or was that a flank dildo? That looked like a tampon to me personally, but... Uh, <laughs> So that is what we've got to do then, so obviously the more enemies you hit, the more these diamond cards comes up and then you press X or square when you get all four diamond cards. But if you get all four, obviously that just means uh, the uh, tampon hurts that little bit more. Okay, so we're coming up to the boss, Big Ann Flo herself now. But there's only a couple of things, so just keep shooting and as soon as you see the four diamond cards, just press the X button. And what she'll do is release three numbers, and then as soon as you see that, you need to dodge it by going up a bit. And then all these blood clots, uh, blood clots are going to keep appearing, so obviously we need to dodge them as well. They're not too bad, but the main thing is try and dodge the numbers as she shoots. Otherwise, it's just a case of, there we go, so just about, just about got that one there. So that one isn't too bad. It may look difficult, but honestly, it is not too bad. As long as you keep having a look at those diamond cards and then press the X button to smash the tampon in your aunt's mouth. 
Wow, I bet I didn't think I was going to be saying that one today. <laughs> hmm. But Jandu Soft maybe do it, so blame them if you don't like it. Okay, so now we need to find a light switch. It's basically the top right corner of the room. Oh, well, hello. Well, well, I suppose what a way to die. So we need to pick up a couple of things then here. We need to pick up the glasses right there, which are on the uh, bin bag. Uh, there's a carrot, for some reason, on the top of this dead guy's back. <laughs> there's a buttons, which are on the cabinet there. And then there is a razor blade on the settee. And I really, really, for the love of God, I do not want to know what's going on. So I have to appreciate Jandu for not... Releasing a video somewhere as to what actually happened, but <laughs> Violet Smith, <laughs> remember that this little um, piece of art, shall we call it, was on her E4 stand. So yeah, that is, I love the sense of humour. Whoever the hell writ this game, I, I love you, okay? It's just flat out, I'm in love. So, that is Violet's story done. We have now, we're now on to the final chapter. We've only got a couple of minutes left on the game. So then, chapter 7, this is loosely based off the game Carmageddon, and what we are is a Uber driver. And you know, obviously, that will you being an Uber driver. So what we need to do then is obviously go left and right, and we need to collect gems. We need to collect 50 gems to complete this. Don't worry about hitting pedestrians, you can hit them all day long. In fact, they enjoy it, they told me. They said, God damn, it turns me on when I get hit and run over by cars. Uh, so hit them all you want, obviously just do not hit the cars. If you hit any of the cars, you will have to replay this minigame over again. Otherwise, just uh, keep trying to aim for the little diamonds or whatever the hell they are. And try and ignore the screams of the dead people you've just run over. Nasty. <laughs> So after we get there then, what we need to do after the conversation, we need to immediately go into the bathroom, the open door just in, um, in front of us or on top of us or whatever the hell that is. So a bit of conversation, jump straight into the door, what we're going to do then is, this is another missable achievement, so again, no chat to select, if you miss that, you'll have to replay it all over again just to grab that, but this is the Hotline, Mas Hotline Asylum game. Which is obviously, uh, it basically is Hotline Miami. Uh, and the best thing is you don't actually need to complete this game. So you can you can kill this first guy, because you always do anyway. And then just die from literally anyone. Press B to exit. And that is good as hell, man. It's good as hell. So now we need to talk to Ethan, Violet and our dead friend over on the left hand side. <laughs> So we'll be playing one more mini game called Crunch. Now, basically. Each of our partners will bring up an issue to us that may or may not cost us some money. We need to choose the most financially responsible decision between the two when they ask us for money. So, you can choose anything for the first three interactions with the old guy, the fork partner, anyone. And then we can choose anything for our undies. So choose anything for that one. Choose anything for Frostenberg. Choose anything for this guy. Now we need to choose no drugs in my studio for Ethan. So when we get to Ethan again, um, I do end up pissing about here for a little bit. Uh, but we do actually need to choose. So thanks partner for the fork partner. So basically anything that's that's basically nice. 
Um, so yeah, it's no drugs in my studio with Ethan. Stop pretending with Frustrenberg. Contact him with Ethan. I should stop pretending with Force Flipper. What? I screwed up with Violet and fresh out the oven with Fork Partner. Um, honestly, I kind of guessed my way through that one. Um, just picking all the nicer options in the end, <laughs> as it were. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, bit of a bit of an annoyance with that one. Sorry that that one wasn't uh, fantastic. Uh, but yeah, so that one's easy enough anyway. So we can just move on. So like I said, talk to all the three guys again, and that is basically job done. Yeah, skinny fat Jack Black. <laughs> So there we have it then, after all of that, you basically end up in a mental hospital with a bag of burritos. And that still could be a lawsuit, burritos, burritos, no, I think you've, no, I think you're pretty cool. And then we go back to the beginning where young Jack thinks, you know what, probably not worth it. I'll just, um, I'll just become a, you know, a, a, a hooker or something instead. Or an OnlyFans model, I don't know. But anyway, that is that then, guys and gals. So that was the very, very underrated Indie Calypse, which I enjoyed thoroughly. Hopefully you enjoyed the game, and hopefully you enjoyed the guide as well. If the guide did help you out, don't forget, of course, to check all... Uh, don't forget uh, to check my socials, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon. Don't forget, of course, to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend if you did think this guide was helpful. Uh, speaking of which, big shout out to everyone on Patreon and YouTube and everyone who continues to like, comment and just support the channel in every which way, especially to those on Patreon. A big, big, massive thank you. Hi, Jandu Soft team. <laughs> but that is that, thank you guys and gals. Thank you so, so much for watching again. I shall see you in the next one. Bye, 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 big love.